Opening up the Playmobil diesel uh, motor and drive unit is not easy because there are about, a, well, there are seven. Two tabs at each end, tabs on the side, etc. Not to be recommended. Uh, not to be recommended because part of the bit that holds the gears together is over here. The gears are, gears are over there. I might be struggling to put it back together. The interesting thing is that you have two motors so it's not just four wheel drive it's got uh, a motor for the front pair of wheels and a motor for the rear pair of wheels and then this drive train i'm not going to touch it anymore i've taken it apart so that we can see what there is in there uh, because i don't want to risk i'm going to very carefully put it back together again uh, because I don't want to risk, risk any of those cogs flying out and getting covered in dust because they're all covered in that silicon grease which you get. Uh, maybe I'll just do one little zoom in so that it's there for the reference. That's a set of motor and gears, some metal weights to give weight to the traction unit motor and set of gears at that end and presumably if you really really wanted to you could at this stage substitute metal wheels by getting some turned wheels and replacing plastic ones uh, plastic wheels of course on smaller gauge models pick up uh, dirt outside if you're not using the uh, rails for track power, I don't suppose it will matter so much. Um, the other power connector is from the battery pickup, which is at the back end of that box. So where this fits is uh, inside the body. This, and it's removed by removing four screws. The rest of the body uh, there's the rest of the body uh, will dissemble but you can see through there quite a meaty little speaker a single uh, circuit board which will be the receiver and the motor speed control unit the sound unit and everything all on one board with a couple of chips I presume so there aren't separate circuits for the functions it's all combined into one as far as I can see at that end the battery pack this end and space in there if you did want to add any other gadgets under that bonnet part of the model you've got room there but really quite a large speaker and it sounds quite loud as well so there we have it the internals of the Playmobil loco so we know exactly what we're getting uh, reattaching the wires from the motive unit this is the bit with the wheels and the motors it's pretty tricky so i'm trying to open it we know when opening lima chassis how tricky it is with all the little tabs i've noticed something here in that just where the yellow tabs come through there's a bit of the gray which sticks out preventing you from pulling the tab back properly I don't know if it's more visible on that one. Um, if I use this, it's about there. I'm hoping that if I remove that little extra bit of the grey plastic, I will to get the tab back far enough to put the card in, as I'm trying to do here, because there are on this um, eight. And if this, those tabs have to be removed as well. Well, there are at least eight possibly more tabs to be held back so you can spring the bottom off before it clips apart all these yellow pieces you see coming through the gray there are all little tabs and it's uh, not easy anyway we'll see where we get to i bet a toddler could get this lid off in seconds i'm not sure i'm going to be able to get it back on well i've managed to spring this off um as I said, there are some little tiny little bits of grey tab, which um, 
just designed so that it won't fall apart and so you can't take it apart. But now I've got it apart. Why? Because I took the motor assembly off, disconnected a couple of plugs, and I can't reconnect the plugs because the wire from this plug is just too short for me to plug it in without taking it apart. So now I can reconnect the three parts. That's the motor assembly, the running board uh, assembly, which has a little circuit board at this end. Well, that could be the sound card embedded onto the circuit board are the red and white LEDs, which show through the front. That is the other control board, and that's a little thing that looks like an antenna, so that presumably there is the receiver. So maybe you've got a sound card at the other end, and quite a substantial speaker, as I said before. So there's what we get inside our loco. Um, I'm still quite impressed because these black blobs usually cover chips. They're not the simplest of circuit boards, a couple of extra chips there. Uh, I think it's only a two layer board. Uh, but plenty of electronics on there, plenty of test points. Um, as I say, the receiver and presumably a little microprocessor under there. Uh, the LEDs mounted onto the board, chip mounted LEDs, the switches, the channel select switch and the on off switch. So, um, oh yes, and that actually tells you what the wires are. It's the connections for the wires there. 3.3 um, volts, ground, 9 volts. Uh, C1, C0, C7, C6, C5, C2, uh, IO on that one. And then there's some more connections there. VCC and ground coming out uh, on that one, which is one of the plugs that we have on it. Just talking my way through it because I don't expect to be taking this apart. I don't see any need to take it apart anymore uh, or look at what it's made of. It's a shame, really, yeah, in some ways. But... I mean, I don't mean it's a shame. It's interesting to see what's inside these things, what you're getting for your money and how it all ticks. The top, let's see if it will work. What joy. Just try the functions. Yes, that's still working. Turn the lights off. The horn works. Turn the sound off. Put the lights on again. So three, three white lights, two red lights. And when it's stopped, you just have the red lights showing front and rear. Okay, don't know how prototypical that is, but it's quite useful. Okay, <laughs> no, just to check it's working. Thank goodness for that. 